that you don't have hope. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that, who, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. My name is Tom Namie. And today I wanted to share with you scripture reading from John chapter 3, verse 16, 17, and 18. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. The human nature had been marred from creation when Adam and Eve fell from, from grace. Grace means natural state. Grace means gift. And God had given them this gift. They were in perfect grace, perfect gift, until they fell out and they decided that they wanted to be like God. And sin came into the world. And as sin came into the world, death came in, sickness came in, everything came in because man had martyred. So God put another plan in effect. His plan from beginning was that his son would save, the son would save us, would come. When you read Genesis chapter 1, and it says, God says, let us create man in our image. In our image, God speaks in plural because he, he already knew the Son and the Son knows the Father and they're all in the Spirit with the Holy Spirit and they're all indwelling together from eternity to eternity. And But one thing about the cross is the Christian cross became an obstacle to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentile but it became the power of God that manifests in the cross. You know, in Deuteronomy, Moses told his people, Cursed be the man who is hanged on the tree. Well, St. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Cursed is the man who hangs on the tree. i read it exactly for you. He said, Jesus, I'm sorry, Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He ransomed us. Ransom means he paid the price for us in exchange. Curse is a man. Jesus became a curse that you and I become a blessing. Jesus became a curse that you and I may have eternal life. Jesus became death that you and I may live forever. Jesus took our sin that we become complete righteousness in God. Jesus become blood and that we be become whole. Jesus became sickness that we become healed. Jesus did it all for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. But whoever does not might be condemned. It's not God who condemns, we condemn. For God gives us every opportunity to come to know him. He wants us to evangelize the world and let him know that Jesus Christ is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light. 
the great Saint Paul writes Timothy, Timothy 1, and he tells them about to how to go to evangelize. And when you read Timothy 2, 4, and 5, he said, For God wishes all men to be saved, all men to be saved, none of them to be lost. And there is only one mediator between us and the Father, that is Jesus Christ. You walk in the church and you see this ugly, ugly statue of a cross that death is there. It looks like defeat, but it's victory of God in it. You see a naked man who is beat. People say, you know, Catholics are fools. Jesus has already done it, and he is alive. He's not dead anymore. Yes, we know. But the cross is a symbol that reminds me that he did it for me, and he did it for you, that we may have eternal life through the cross. Without the cross, there's no salvation. Without the cross, there's no eternity. Without death of Jesus, there's no eternal life. Jesus says in John 5, 25 to 29, the hour is coming when the Son of Man, what? But the dead shall hear his voice. Hear the voice of the Son of Man. And then there shall be judgment and those who done righteous into eternal life and those who done evil into condemnation. Why? Because they're all waiting in a boat of death. Man cannot enter the kingdom of heaven because the human nature had been marred. So God the Father, he sent his son to redeem us from all the evil that done from the time of Adam all the way to the last man that will be on earth. All sin will be dealt with. All because of one man who is God man, that Jesus Christ has to die in order to save humanity from eternity to eternity. You know, I was sitting in prison. I went to prison for 16 years for arson and explosive destruction of property. And I was sitting in a Bible study one day. And the heaven opened up. And I see Jesus sitting upon the throne. And he was glowing, radiating beams of radiance through his face. And as I looked up, I was like, wow. If they only knew what I see. I never knew, though, the infinite love of God. As I was enjoying that view, like a laser beam came down from heaven and it beamed right into my heart. As it beamed into my heart, I knew who God was. God is infinite love. God is infinite goodness. God is an infinite. And at that moment, I knew who God the Father was, I knew who Jesus was, and I knew who the Holy Spirit was. At that moment, I knew that God created everything to be perfect because every good gift comes from the God of light who is the Father, James 1.17. There is no alteration in him. He is perfect and perfect and perfect. God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are perfect in every way. And I knew at that moment that God is love. I left there and I held my tears that I wouldn't cry. And I left there because I didn't want the inmate to see me break down and start crying. And at that moment, I knew who Jesus was. Jesus is the Lamb of God who had to die upon that cross to save me, an ugly human being like me, and save you and everyone in this world. You know, in Exodus chapter, in Exodus chapter 12, they had to bring this perfect lamb in the house. And they have to nurture this lamb from the 10th to the 14th, take care of it and live with them and make sure this lamb was healthy. It was not blind, not a bone was broken, and it had to be a young lamb. And Jesus was the perfect lamb. He was sinless. He was sinless. He was perfect in every way. He was God. He was God. He had two natures, God in one and person the other. He was flesh and God. Two natures in one person. And that's who he was. 
And Jesus was perfect in every way. And he had to die to save us. And now we come to the truth. And we read in Hebrew chapter 7 verse 25. That no man could go to the Father. Because he had to make the perfect offering for us. And read, look at this. Therefore he is always able to save those who approach God through him. Since he lives forever to make intercession for them. Without the cross, there could be no eternal life. No salvation. No eternal life. No salvation without the cross. Because as Jesus rose from the dead, he goes up to the Father and he offers him everything that he had done, including our human nature is taken up to heaven. He opens the door and one day, as we die, our human nature, as our soul rises to the Father, and Jesus opens up the door. You see, in the book of Luke, God speaks about Abraham and Lazarus. And he gives this, he gives this separation between heaven and hell, but he doesn't say that Abraham is in paradise. He doesn't say he is with God in heaven. He said that Abraham is, he said Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham because there is a place where Abraham is awaiting is a boat of death, but it's a good place on which we call purgatory as Catholics. And then Jesus, as the death, as he dies upon the cross, he opens the door of eternal life and we see in Matthew 27, 52, the graves come open and then the saints are seen all over and then as he rises, all the saints rise with him. He takes our human nature to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him might have eternal life. My beloved, eternal life is free. On your own, you can't do it. But through Jesus, you can do all things. Without the cross, there is no eternal life and there is no salvation. The enemy, Satan, wants to distort and take your joy away. But you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he, did not, he became sin who did not know sin, that we become complete righteousness of God. We became holy. We became complete. Jesus had did it all upon the cross for us. That's why we look at the cross as a power of salvation. We look at the cross as power of redemption. We look at the cross as power of everything because the world could never be redeemed without the blood of the Lamb. What's stopping you from being a fully committed Christian? What's stopping you from really having a relationship with Jesus Christ? I tell you, the minute you submit your will to Christ and accept His infinite love, you will feel happier and you will feel joy and you will feel great things. The enemy will come at you, of course, because he wants to steal the seed before they spout in your heart. But I tell you, you must believe in the only Son of the living God, and that is Jesus. He became a curse that you become complete righteousness of God. You are whole, you are holy, you are God through the Son only. You are holy only through the Son because on your own you can do nothing. And that's what Jesus said in John 15, 5. Without me you can do nothing, but through me you will bear all fruit. Now I tell you, who is stopping you from full commitment to Christ Jesus? Curse is a man who hangs on a tree. Why don't you accept that curse that, that, that was done for you? Why don't you accept it and let Jesus rule, rule over your life? I thank you, Lord, for this program today. And I pray for all of you that you may accept the cost of eternal life, the cost of salvation, that you add Jesus to be your mediator between you and the Father. Because he is God. He is the Son of God. He is one and the same. And he said that he told Philip in John 14, 8, Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
unto the Holy Spirit. May the cross guide you and bless you, protect you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen. If you don't have hope, 